Have you ever read in your Bible about how Jesus broke the Sabbath? Have you heard, read about how the Pharisees came against him and told him, you do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? And then Jesus, he went and he said, you guys don't get it, do you? The Sabbath, I mean, man wasn't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. And you know that I am Jesus. He says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Is Jesus in that act saying that the Sabbath commandment given by God is abolished or is not important after he has come anymore? You see, that's what many teach and believe. But I want to submit to you that that belief actually poses a great contradiction and error to, with the word of God. You see, scripture teaches that the law of God is what defines sin. 1 John 3 verse 4 says, how do we know what sin, what sin is? We look at what the transgression of the law is. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if Jesus truly came and said that this law is not important anymore, we can break it. He would actually be in sin because sin is a transgression or the breaking of the law. And therefore, that would actually mean that Jesus, our sacrifice for salvation, for for getting rid of our sin, it would actually be null and void because he broke the law of his father. So there's something wrong with this picture. What really happened in those stories where Jesus seemingly went to go against and break the Sabbath? Did he really? Let's find out. The first account that I want to talk about is in Mark 2. And this is probably one of the most famous ones where Jesus went with his disciples and they picked grain on the Sabbath. Something that the Pharisees said is for him not lawful to do. We read in Mark 2 verse 23. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to plug heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and, when, and was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Now the first very interesting statement that is made by these Pharisees who come and accuse him of breaking the Sabbath is they see him plucking, we're walking with disciples through this grain field and they're plucking this grain because they're hungry. They need to eat. And the Pharisees said, you are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Jesus then comes and tells him about how David went when he was hungry. He was desperate. He went to the temple and actually ate the bread that was sanctified for the priests. Bread that was not really exactly his to take according to the law. Why did Jesus do this? Why is he trying to say it's okay to break the law? I want to submit to you, no. He was simply trying to communicate to these Pharisees the point of the law. You see, the greatest two commandments that Jesus taught, he says, what, when they asked him, what are the greatest commandments? He said to love the Lord your God of all your heart, mind, soul, strength and love your neighbor as yourself. So the point of the law really is that it is supposed to bring life and it's supposed to promote love. If life and love is not promoted by your keeping of the law, you are actually breaking it. You cannot actually break the law of God if you keep the higher commandment of love and, to, and the preservation of life. You see, we need to ask the question, what was Jesus and his disciples doing in that grain field? Why were they there? I want to submit to you that it's quite obvious. They were there because they were ministers of the gospel. They were actually in that day, they were preaching the gospel and they were traveling and they were out, out outside in the open. 
and they were growing hungry on the Sabbath day. In fact, it's quite interesting because grain fields in the scriptures and fields are often attributed to the fields that the laborers need to go into where God says the, the, the work is made much, but the laborers are few. There's a lot of work. I need field workers to go into this harvest. You see, this is what they were doing. This is a picture. Yeshua, Jesus and his disciples were in that field because they were out in the harvest of God. They were proclaiming the gospel in that day. And so, yes, they got hungry by nature. We would. But now them going and plucking um, grain and to eat. Is that now breaking the law? No, because it is helping them to bring life. You see, if they did not eat. It would bring it, it would it would not promote life both for their bodies for nourishment as well as helping them to go on their way to preach the gospel. If we say we can't go preach the gospel today because there is a toll gate that we need to go through with our cars and you know if we need to go preach the gospel we need to pay and it's going to be on the Sabbath. So rather not we would rather not go preach the gospel. By that logic we are actually breaking the law. We're actually failing. The, the commandment because the commandment is there for us to bless us. It is there to bring life, to bring love and to help us fulfill what God has called us to do. If God has called us to preach the gospel, we cannot let something like the Sabbath day come in the way of that. But see, they weren't breaking the Sabbath. They weren't making someone work for them. They could have gone and said, go to some shop and say, you guys need to give me some food. I'm going to pay for it. They could have done that, but they didn't because that would be breaking the Sabbath. In fact, instead, what they went to do is they themselves went and they picked a little bit of grain to eat on the way to doing their ministry work. You see, the Sabbath commandment is given to us to tell us that we should rest from our labors on the seventh day that God created in Genesis 2 verse 3, when God himself rested from his labors. God made an example for us on how to rest. And so we ought to rest as he did. We ought to walk as Yeshua walked. We ought to rest as Yeshua did. We ought to rest in what he came to do for us. Yeshua also went to say that I also work as my father still works. Now, this is a peculiar statement because as he's trying to say that God is no longer keeping the Sabbath day that he initially created in Genesis 2 in the creation account. Now, I want to submit to you that he's not talking about the kind of work that God asked us to abstain from when he gave us the Sabbath. The Sabbath was given as a way for us to abstain from secular work, the things of this world, the, the labors of, our, of this world, to, for us to work to get money and, and so on. So he was, sa- he was t- teaching that you, got, you should rest, set this day apart, make this day holy and different. This day must look different from the rest of your week. So you will rest and you will not make anyone else work for you. Not your servant, not your daughter, no one, not your brother, no one else. So secular work is different because Yeshua and his father, Jesus and his father, our father, God is not busy with the work of this world. They are busy with bringing life and bringing love. They are busy with the the kingdom of heaven. They are busy with what we would call ministry work today. And so similarly, if we are busy with the work of the kingdom, ministry work, the same work Yeshua and his father was busy with on the Sabbath. We are free to go ahead and do that. We're free to go and pray for people. We're free to heal the sick. We're free to cast out the demon, even if that is physically laborious, because it could be. We are free to go and and do so. However, we should still, while we do that, do everything we can to ensure that we do not go and go unprepared. In other words, we will make sure that we do what we can to prepare so that we may have food. You really think that Yeshua and Jesus didn't plan to go into the grain field. They knew what they were doing. They were planning. They were thinking ahead on the sixth day before the Sabbath. They were thinking, well, tomorrow is going to be the Sabbath. We're going to go. We're going to pray for people. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then we will go and we'll go pick some grain. That is where we will get our food. You see, they didn't go and say, well, you know, we are going to go and you're going to go to the shop and this restaurant. and We're going to make these people work for us so we can get fed. No, because that would be a transgression of the law of God. That would be sin. 
And that's why Yeshua didn't really break the Sabbath. You see, the Pharisees told him, you guys are doing what is unlawful to do of the, uh, on the Sabbath. But according to who? Are we going to believe the testimony of a Pharisee? Are we going to believe the, what the Pharisees' interpretation of right or wrong is? No. The Pharisees were the ones Yeshua continuously, Jesus, he continuously spoke against them because they were hypocrites and they didn't understand what the law was meant for. Life and love. I mean, for, they even persecuted him for healing someone on the Sabbath. I mean, that is just ridiculous. For We know that that is a good thing. And, and Jesus replied and he said, well, if you, you had an ox or a donkey or something and it fell into a pit, wouldn't you help it out on the Sabbath? Of course they would. They would bring because I would save an animal, even if that is laborious to do. I would save an animal. But we will not go and we will not do labor things so we can get money. And try and do that. No, we are to make this day holy, set apart and different from the rest of our week. You see, we need to remember that the Pharisees had many commandments and instructions on top of the law of God. So whenever they come and they say, well, you know, that you, Jesus, you're doing something that is unlawful. You need to first ask according to what law? Because the Torah never prohibits what Jesus is doing here. What David did when he went into, into the temple was not unlawful either because he was in a position where the only way for him to get fed and his men was to go and eat the bread that was available there. You see, but they also in that, if you go read the actual account that Jesus is quoting, you read how they were making sure they were sure that they have sanctified themselves there. They are actually following the laws of God. They are not. They haven't been with a woman, for example. So they are qualified to partake in the bread of the temple. Then David didn't go and just go and, and, and break the law. He simply, but according to the Pharisees, yes, because when we look at the laws of Judaism, much of Orthodox Judaism today, they hold on to many of the same laws that the Pharisees held on to in this day. And today they've added even more things such as you're not allowed to drive on the Sabbath. You're not allowed to walk further than a certain X amount of meters. You're not allowed to do X, Y and Z. Many laws and things that are not in the word of God that has been added by man made traditions, maybe with good intentions, but it was never the, nevertheless added. And this tradition that was added actually makes it a burden to then keep. You see, we're not allowed to add these kind of things because it takes away from the spur of the pure law of God that was been given in his word. You see, the law of God, the psalmist says, your law is like honey to me. Your law is perfect. We don't need to add to it. We don't need to take away from it. We don't need to try and make it work or adapt it. That it has been given as perfect. And when we apply what Jesus came to teach us about it, we'll be able to keep it as the Lord written on our hearts. But see, Jesus didn't come to say, you don't need to do that anymore. No, he came to do it to teach us how to keep it properly. This is why Jesus said the Sabbath was made for you. You were not made for the Sabbath. He is saying he was basically telling the Pharisees, you guys have made the Sabbath your idol. You have made the Sabbath your God. He, the Sabbath is the thing that rules over you instead of you understanding that the Sabbath is there to simply protect you and bless you. You see, there is a difference. We can see the law of God as bondage or we can see the law as a blessing. God has given us not bondage but a blessing. It only becomes bondage when we misapply it or when we don't understand the point thereof. You see, just like when you live under your parents' house and they come and they tell you, honey, I want you to be home by 9 p.m. I don't want you to stay out later than that when you go out tonight. Are they giving you that law, that instruction, that rule because they want to put you in bondage? No, they're giving it to you because they want to protect you from what is outside your house. They want to because they love you. It's an it's a instruction of love. So that ruling was given for your protection. It's not that you were made for it. It was made for you to protect you. And so similarly, the Sabbath was made for us. We ought to keep it. We ought to remember it. It's the fourth commandment. It's the only commandment in the Ten Commandments that says, remember before it starts. Remember the Sabbath day. It's like almost like God, ironically, how how we've forgotten it. It's like God knew 
He knew most of Christianity would stop keeping it and totally toss it aside and say it's abolished. Brothers and sisters, don't be deceived. Satan is stealing our intimate time with God from us because this is what this commandment was made for. To better explain God's law, I want to top it off with this. God's law is almost like a minimum speed limit. If you're driving on a road and there is a minimum speed limit on this highway that says you're not allowed to drive slower than X miles per hour, then you will you will adhere to that because that's the law of this road. But if if there is someone in front of you who has had an accident and who's the, the road is being blocked and there are people all over and there's people who got hurt, will you go and you will keep driving this minimum speed limit because it says I'm supposed to drive that or will you stop because something happened in front of you? No, you will stop to preserve life because if you keep driving, you will kill destroy and you miss the point of what that minimum speed limit was for. It was there in the first point at the first point of it was to actually protect accidents from happening us from accidents in the first place. But if we now go and we go through an accident because we need to adhere to this law, we actually miss the point of the law because that law was there to, pr to bring life. So we don't make an accident on this road. Similarly, God's law works the same. We must understand why it was given so that we can apply it correctly. So I hope this short teaching encourages you to go and seek out his Shabbat, his Sabbath day. And don't keep it like the way that everyone just like Judaism does. It's not about that. It's about just go to your Bible, go to how God told Israel to keep it in the, in the Exodus. Go to how God talked about in Genesis 2 before he even gave the law. They were they were already giving and God was resting on this day. Look at how Jesus himself kept it because he kept it. And then he said, whoever abides in me ought to walk just as I walked. Paul kept it also. And Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And at the end of the day, what we ought to do is we have to look at how did Jesus walk? Because we want to walk just as he walked. For that is what it means to be a disciple and follower of him. Share this video with someone who may not understand who or who you think may help um, understand about the Sabbath. For this will bring you freedom as it has been given me freedom. My relationship with God has grown exponentially when I started keeping it years ago because it has been given to protect for a purpose. It is my 24 hour date with Jesus. And Jesus is waiting for you to have that date with you every week too. Don't let him show up for that date and you never show because he is waiting. God bless you and keep you. Shalom.